Okay, hey guys, so today I'll be focusing on something called impedance, or as I have here, uh, reactance. So you may have heard of impedance, um, and you may have heard of reactance, um, and since you're watching this video, you probably don't know what that means. So let me start off with a simple concept that you all know. All right, so um, right here. I have a regular eighth watt resistor, okay? So, this is just to demonstrate something. This resistor has what's called resistance. It's a concept um, that the resistor, when you apply a voltage across the resistor, so we have a voltage, we have the resistor, okay? Doesn't matter the value. When you apply a voltage across the resistor, so we'll call it V, a current will flow through the resistor, I, and this current will be determined by the voltage and the resistance, okay? That's Ohm's law. Now, the resistance is measured in a quantity called ohms, denoted by the omega symbol, okay? Pardon my bad drawing. But, um, so ohms are just the resistance of the passing of electricity, and as, we, as I just explained, resistance is basically when you pass a voltage across something, a current flows through it. That's, that's basically the definition of resistance. So, what does this have to do with impedance? Well, impedance is the total resistance of something, okay? So something's impedance is the total resistance of something. So for this resistor, right here, its impedance is simply just its resistance, because that's the only component of resistance it has. So it happens to be um, 1.5 something. It's, it's not important, okay? So, what is important is, um, the, the components of impedance. So we have impedance, it has two components. It has DC resistance and AC resistance. So there's a big difference here, okay? A resistor has the same resistance as AC or DC, okay? Meaning if we apply the same voltage AC signal across the resistor, so we make this either three volts DC, oh, that says three volts, I don't know if you can read that, or 3 volts AC, okay? So it doesn't matter um, what we do, what, what type of, uh, for resistor we use, okay? But reactance here, we're here to talk about reactance and impedance. And like I said, impedance is the total for everything, okay? So for a resistor, the impedance is simply going to be its resistance, because resistors behave the same for DC or AC. You can go test this out yourself. You've probably figured it out by this point. This is not important. What is important is something that you may have not figured out by yourself, is that if we take a... Uh, so here, say we take a DC voltage. Okay, 3 volts, right? We apply it across a capacitor instead. Okay, the value's irrelevant. There's going to be a small current surge when the capacitor is charged up, but once the capacitor is charged up, no current's going to flow. It's going to look like an open short, because remember, capacitors are open at AC. Okay? But, if we change this to, or sorry, open at uh, DC. If we change this to AC, you're going to find out that the, the voltage, that there's going to be current continuously flowing through this capacitor. And what did we say for the definition for uh, resistance was? It was when you put a voltage across something, there's current flow. So that means that this capacitor has resistance. And this resistance is its capacitive reactance denoted by XC, capacitive reactance. You also have inductive reactance, but I might do a different video on that. It's, it's very similar. You can look up the formula. Anyways, as we know, the component of AC is its amplitude and its frequency. And... Um, so the amplitude doesn't matter, but the frequency matters. That means that the resistance of this capacitor, uh, which is directly proportional to the current flow, so I'll just say the current flow through this capacitor is going to change depending on the frequency of an AC signal that we put through it. That means that the total impedance of anything that's not a resistor, so i.e. an inductor or a cap, will change its total impedance or complex impedance. Um, they're basically the same. Uh, based on the frequency of the signal that's applied. Okay? So, basically, capacitors have a resistance when there is an AC signal, 
and it changes with the frequency of the AC signal. So here is generally a general curve. So if we put the capacitive reactance on this side, or the resistance, so we'll just measure it in ohms, and we put the frequency, it's going to look like this. It's going to be very high, and it's going to go down, okay? And it's going to get very close to zero. And this is a general flaw of capa capacitors. Like we said, at low signals, so at infinitely low, or zero, it's going to be nothing. There's going to be no reactance, because it's DC, and as you know, no current flow, so no resistance. And at infinity frequency, it's going to be a dead short. So you may have heard that capacitors pass AC, and that's because they're a resistor, just like a resistor will pass AC. A DC, it will still attenuate it. A capacitor will pass AC, but it will attenuate it. So that's what uh, reactance is, and that's what impedance is. It's the total resistance of something. And how do you calculate this? So what you do to calculate this for a capacitor is you find the capacitive reactance is equal to 1 over 2 pi frequency and capacitance. Keep in mind that all these values are in their normal ones, so capacitive reactance is ohms, just in ohms. Pi is just pi, it's not a variable. Frequency is in hertz. Capacitance, this is the one important one, in farads. Okay, so that means that if you have a one microfarad capacitor, you're instead going to have to write this. 0 0.000001. Okay, keep that in mind. And also the capacitive reactance is in ohms. It's not its own reactance is in its own um, value. It's simply ohms. Okay, so... I hope I helped you to understand reactance in a capacitor and impedance. So just to illustrate my main key points, which I've probably done many times already, um, just another time to make you more bored. Uh, impedance is the total resistance of something, uh, DC and AC, uh, at any given frequency. So you can calculate this for a capacitor using the uh, formula capacitive reactance equals 1 over 2 pi. Uh, frequency capacitance. Um, remember, they're in, all in their normal units. Uh, capacitive reactance is in ohms, frequencies in hertz, and capa uh, capacitance is in farads. Remember, not milli, not micro, not nano, not pico. Regular old farads, so you have to convert. So uh, that's impedance, is, is something's total resistance. Reactance is a capacitor's um, uh, resistance to the flow of alternating current. Remember, uh, it blocks DC current. So um, that's 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 reactance basically. And like I said, you can calculate the capacitive reactance. Um, so uh, really, those are my main key points. And remember, as the frequency goes up, the capacitive reactance will always go down for any capacitor. It will be different depending on the value of the capacitor. Um, but it will do the same thing, and as you lower the frequency, uh, it will go down. Uh, the resistance will go up. So that's capacitive reactance. It's sort of the resistance of a capacitor to any given frequency. Remember, it differs for a different frequency. So if you want to sort of make a, a capacitor, you know, with a resistance of uh, a kilo ohm at a specific frequency, if you want to change that frequency, you got to change your capacitor value because um, it's reactive.